computation. And see what the graph looks like. We'll use the 1 over x function, which was up here. So we found a derivative, which was negative uh, x to the negative 2 power, or negative 1 over x squared. So let's use that fact and graph a few tangent lines. So we're given 1 over x is our function. We already computed f prime negative 1 over x squared. And now what I want to do is find, so I want to find and graph some tangent lines. What x value would be a bad one to choose for a tangent line? Zero. Zero would be pretty bad. So I got no y value. Let's go with uh, one and, let's go with one and negative two. So find tangent line x equals one, and find another tangent line at x equals negative two. And I will help you with the first slope. So slope is the derivative f prime when you plug in one. And we're using that negative one over x squared. So our slope for our first line is negative one. Now to get a line, you need a slope and a point. So how do we get our point? I know our x value, I need to know the y value. So we're gonna take our x value and f it. So our point will be one comma f of one, which we just looked, well we looked at f prime of one, but f of one, one over one is one. So we got a slope of negative one going through one, one. So write down that line and then do something very similar for neg negative two. You'll get a different line, different slope, figure out your y value. And if you got time, you can graph too. You saw the graph a second ago. Question? Um, for the, the first point that you got, um, we found negative one and how similar. Ah, that's a good question. So, how is this? They look similar. How is that different from that? Um, like, uh, where we found, where we plugged in one and we got negative one, and that's y, or that'd be f of x. Well, that's not f, that's, so this is not f of x right here. That's the derivative, f prime of x. So that's how the slope looks at that point, not what the y value is. Does that make sense? So it's talking about the steepness of the graph at that point, which is independent of the y value. Well, so the slope is, if we just talk about the slope, uh, the way we think about slope, slope is a number. It's rise over run. If you go one to the right, how much do you go up? So I see negative one. Could think of it as negative one over one, so if I go one to the right, I'm going down one. Is one way to think about the slope. Now if we talk about the, oops, the tangent line. Uh, the tangent line's a line. And that's what I'm trying to find. So I needed the equation of a line, which the slope is one part of that equation. And I need to point, which I wrote on the right side.
So it's going to look, I can see this, the slope's negative 1. It's going to graph something like that, but I have to figure out what's the, you know, how far up and down is it. What's the, either the y-intercept or I'm going point slope form. So we have negative x plus 2. So any questions on the first equation of a line right there? Did you get negative x plus 2? Mm -hmm. All right. Probably something is wrong, which... Because the point is negative 2, negative 1 half, is it? Negative, oh yeah, that's a negative. That makes a big difference. Wait, did I accidentally already account for that? Uh, negative 2, negative 1 half. So that should be a minus. There we go. Minus, minus. Does that seem right? Well, we'll find out when we graph it. So we got our two, hopefully, two lines right here. We certainly have two lines. Maybe they'll be the right ones. So we got negative x plus 2 and negative fourth x minus 1. So we'll go with the easy one first. y equals negative x plus. So if we just look right here, before I hit the plus 2, we have a line with the right slope. But of course, I didn't put in the right y-intercept. So if we look at x value of 1, zoom is weird. All right, so there, I'm putting the mouse cursor on the point right there. It looks like the slope's about negative 1. And it turns out it's exactly negative 1. But we didn't put in the right y-intercept, so I have to move my line. So my line represents the slope. It just doesn't actually pass through the right point. So now we do the little plus 2 that we computed. Plus 2. Now it shifts up to exactly the right point. And if I keep zooming in, I think we did this before. So why is this useful? Well, if you zoom in really far, the curve is red. If you look at the curve, it gets really close to that line and it looks a lot straighter if you keep zooming in. So the idea is the curve is smooth, it doesn't have any corners, so if you zoom in far enough it will look almost like a straight line. And that's what we do with the tangent line is approximate the curve. Now this approximation is horrible if you move away from the point. Curve curves, the line does not curve with it. So the more curviness, the less accuracy you get. So we call that curvature and when the curvature is higher the estimation becomes worse more quickly. And our other one was, let's see, somebody have it? They can read it off. All right, so that's our second line right there. And if we scroll into negative 2, you can see that it intersects at the right spot. It looks just like the graph. Now you move further away, it does not look like the graph down here. So it's really bad estimation if you're going to plug in a negative 0.5 for your x value. It's not the best estimate there, but it's really good if you're going to be somewhere in here. It's good enough, depending on what you're doing. So it can be useful to graph out your tangent line.
this might be your uh, form of a line right here, or you might be a slope intercept type person. I recommend you switch to this type of person because uh, when you do linearization, you won't have to remember anything. This is linearization right here. So this form is going to be a little bit faster for computations in the future. So I recommend you use this one right here. So we just did a whole bunch of examples. We'll get back into some theory for a few minutes. So when does a derivative exist? Did I talk about that? I think we just computed them. Didn't talk about them existing. Nope. So when does your derivative exist? A derivative exists exactly when so by writing that down we have a function f and the x value we're using is x naught so this derivative is at x naught and this exists exactly when the left and right derivative of the diff or left and right difference quotient limit exists and are equal. Or maybe exactly when the left and right derivative We say f is differentiable at x naught. If the derivative exists. When we say the derivative exists, that means the definition of derivative, the difference quotient limit. If that exists, then your derivative exists. So the word differentiable, most words that have able at the end, you could say them as able to be differentiated. So that's exactly what it means. This is able to be differentiated. So this is differentiable. At a point, what about differentiable on an interval? And differentiable is an annoying word to write, so we'll just write diffable. We have an interval. You're differentiable in interval if you're differentiable at every single point in the interval. <coughs> Diffable is differentiable. I think about it, use the initials DA or something like that, that would not be, at least to me, that wouldn't seem like differentiable. It's too big of a word to just use two or three letters. So I just read it's diffable. Diffable at each uh, x in the interval. So our first theorem, differentiability implies continuity. Mm -hmm. 
So if f is differentiable at x0, then f is continuous at x0. So this works on points. If f is differentiable, then f is continuous. Also, if f is differentiable on a whole interval, that means that f is differentiable at every single point. Apply the theorem. That means because it's differentiable at every point individually, it's continuous at every point individually. And that's the definition of uh, conti continuity on an interval. So when we prove this, we're just going to prove at a single point. We don't have to prove for an entire interval. So we're going to suppose f, have I written that symbol before, the half dollar sign? That means suppose. If you could write an s upside down, actually you could. How does that look? Oh, that looks really weird. It seems like something a mathematician would have done. Oh, that means suppose. All right, but what I actually means suppose is what I wrote up here. So that means suppose f is diffable at x naught. We want to show what does it mean to be continuous at x naught? I know you only need to know that last week, not this week. Continuous. Yeah. Limit is value. All right, so we're supposing f is differentiable. What does it mean to be differentiable? means lim h approaches 0 fx plus h minus fx over h equals right, prime of, and I'm using x naught. This doesn't work for any x, so I really should be writing little x naught, naught, and x naught. Let's change our definition of continuous a little bit and do something slightly different. So we could show this uh, definition of continuity, or let's think about a slightly different version that has a limit with h. So we can send h to 0 and rewrite this as x0 plus h. So instead of sending, instead of sending x towards x0, we could start out with x0 plus some small number and then send that small number to 0. So that's the same thing. Just think when you send h to 0, means x naught plus h is going to go towards x naught. So we're just changing the way we write it a little bit. So instead of sending directly the input to x naught, we're making the input. We are doing that, but we're writing the input a little differently, x naught plus h. So let's think how in the world do we do that? Do we arrive at that conclusion starting here? So we're going to do some algebra first, and then use some calculus rules. So first thing I'm going to do is subtract f prime x naught to the other side. Oh, 
hold on, is that really what we want to do? Actually, no. So this is what we know. We wrote down what we know. So we know that's happening. So these two are equal. Why is that? H cancels the H, and we subtracted f of x naught and added f of x naught. So these two are equal. Why would I write this thing on the right side? Because we're going to basically take a limit of it. So we rewrote f of x plus h to include the difference quotient. In order to do that, I had to undo that as well. That's why we got the extra h and that right there. If I didn't have those two, we'd be cheating. These would not be the equal. So if I didn't do that, we would not have things that were equal. And now, what we're going to do is treat both sides fairly. Remember, you're basically doing algebra or calculus, as long as you treat both sides of your equation the same way. So we're going to take a limit on both sides. And we're going to send h to 0. That's what we're going to do. Now on the left side, I don't really know anything about the limit of f of x plus h when h approaches 0. If this happens to equal f of x naught, that's what I'm trying to show. So I can't just assume that it's going to work out. So everything that we're going to do is going to be on the right side. Taking the limit of this entire side. So I'm going to draw a box around what I want to heap together. So I want to keep that part of the fraction together because that's my base, that's going to turn into my derivative. So I want to keep that part together. So what we're going to do is uh, take the limit of h times the limit of what's in the box. So I'm going to use the uh, multiplication rule for limits, where the limit of h times this thing is the limit of h times the limit of this thing. And the other thing we're going to do, you need to split the limit up across multiplication, but also there's a sum happening. So that's going to be plus the limit of the other thing. So I'm using two limit laws at one time. So how do I know that the ugly limit in the middle works out? How do I know that what I underlined actually has a nice limit? What did I underline? What do we call that? It's called difference quotient. And once we take a limit, what do we call it? Derivative. And we supposed already that that existed and it was some nice number. That's what we supposed at the beginning, somewhere up here. The limit is some f prime of x naught. So it has a nice value. So we assume that that limit was f prime of x naught. You're not guaranteed, every function does not have a derivative. 
but we started out assuming this function had derivative at x naught. So that's fine. What about our last limit right here, the one on the right side? What is that limit? Any h's in your function? So it's constant. So it doesn't matter what h is going to, it's just fx naught. There's no h's in there. Only one more limit to deal with. This is a very easy limit. So this is the identity limit. Just plug in zero, you got zero. So let's look what we have. Zero times a number. Well, that's nice, that's zero. So f prime, was, f prime of x naught was just some number. So zero times that number is zero. And we're left with just f of x naught. And what did we start with on the other side? This was lim h approaches 0 fx0 plus h. So there is our continuity at that x value. So the f of x0 is the derivative? f prime of x0 is the derivative, yeah. What I underlined is a derivative, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So every everything just came from what is directly above it, basically. So that middle term is the derivative. So that's that's the final integral you just simplified after that? Uh, what's your question? Well, I was just trying to see what we were trying to find. I thought it was a derivative, and instead of derivative, was up there all the way in the top. So would that be considered like your answer type of thing? So the, this doesn't have an answer. We just started with an assumption and proved that we get the conclusion. So there's not really an answer to this other than the what I wrote above it, the theorem is correct. So if we start with the supposition, we can arrive at the conclusion every time. And we're going to go to differentiation rules. So if you remember to one thing from your calculus class, if you took it before, it was probably some of these rules. This is where most people start remembering their calculus, is especially the power rule. So we're going to create rules from our definitions that we already have. Or not from our definition of the single definition of derivative. There's not multiple definitions of derivative. So we'll do constant fun. We'll go basically start with the easy ones and then slowly crank up the difficulty. So the easiest function is a constant function. And we like to use the letter C for some reason, probably because it's for constant. So we're going to look at the function that is always outputting the value C, no matter what the input is, always outputting C. So we're going to need a difference quotient. Usually the most difficult part is figuring out what is f of x plus h, except constant function makes it pretty easy. Well, what's f of x plus h for this function? C. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you input, you always can get C out. So let's apply the f prime x equals lim h approaches 0, fx plus h minus fx divided by h. So go ahead and fill in those values and see what you get.
So why is this limit not 0 over 0? Looks like it could be. H doesn't equal 0. So it's 0 everywhere. The limit doesn't care about when h is equal to 0. It is only concerned when h is getting close to 0. So when h is close to 0, 0 over a small number is still 0. That would be different if it was h over h squared it would be a different story. I couldn't say this was always 0. But we have 0 over h, which is always going to be 0. So there's our constant function derivative. So the way we're going to write this, we'll write our, we'll write as d over dx of c equals 0. So we'll keep our derivative rules on the right side and put them all in boxes. So there's our first one. So before we do our next, the next up will be the power rule. We need to spend some time doing some algebra. So let's look at some neat algebra. So we're going to multiply this right here. What pattern is happening right here with any time you write three dots, that means there should be a pattern going on. So what pattern is happening? The power of z is decreasing by 1. And the power of x starts at 0, first power, second power, to the n minus first power. So basically your z powers are decreasing, or x powers are increasing it by 1 as you go across. So how do you multiply something like this? You could call this foiling, but there's a whole lot of inside-outside terms going on. So let's go with take this, or really distributing is what you're doing when you foil. So we're going to distribute the first term, the entire x minus z uh, individually to each term. So the first term, we're going to get x, z, n minus 1 minus z, n. So I just multiplied the first term here, x minus z, times z to the n minus 1. So x times z to the n minus 1 is the first part of that minus, and the z bumped up the power of the other z by 1. So it's z to the n. Now we're going to do the same thing for the second term here. So we're going to get plus, I see an x is already over there, so we're going to get x squared, z uh, to the n minus 2, minus, now we're going to pick up another z, I'm going to write my x's first. So there's a single x, and then we have z n minus 2. Uh oh, that's not good. n minus 1. Yeah, n minus 1. That was right. So any questions on the first two terms? So same thing for the third term. So multiply that x in here. So we're going to get x cubed, zn minus 3, minus, we get bring another x over. So we have, or another z over, z squared, sorry, x squared, z to the n minus 2.
and now we're going to write plus dot 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 and the last two terms. Well, it's really going to be four terms. So multiplying x in here, we have x to the n minus 1, z minus, bring another z over, x n minus 2, z squared. And last up, plus multiply through by an x, minus multiply by through by an z. All right, no problem. So we'll simplify this tomorrow. Should be some terms, obviously, that cancel out. Turns out there'll be almost every term that's going to cancel out.